Hi, this is Steve Rothery. I'm Steve Hogarth, and you're watching Morrow.com. We're from Aurelia. Skulking away Well, we, we changed it God knows how many times. Yeah. We've got a, a Spanish artist called Antonio Sejas, and we, we kind of saw some of his work. He, he designed a sleeve for a band called Gaspacho that we know. Um, and he's been sending us bits and pieces of his art over the years. He's been sending us calendars and things, and we've, we've looked at them. Oh, it's quite nice. Um, so what happened was that when we decided we would make a huge special package again with this record, we would need a lot of art, we would need a lot of, uh, a, a lot of work to go into the package. Carl Glover, our regular artist, put his hand up and he said, I've got to go to Tokyo, I'm not going to have time to do this. Um, you know, I'll, I'll certainly put it together and assemble it and uh, format it for you, but uh, I can't create the source artwork, I just won't have time. So we approached Antonio and uh, he said he would love to do it and he worked really really hard and he sent us so many images he was sending us two or three images a day at one point I don't think he was sleeping um, hundreds and hundreds of, of very interesting sometimes hand drawn sometimes computer generated most of the time 50-50 and photographic and then interfered with uh, with, with computer effects um, he sent us an awful lot of stuff and um, there's an image of a, a, f a yellow field um, with a rainbow in the sky, but the rainbow is upside down, so it's smiling. Um, and I loved that image, and I thought that would make a great cover for the album. Um, and I think at one point that was the cover, and then somebody picked something else out, and we said, no, let's make this the, 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 the cover. And after about three or four changes of mind, you know, we thought, well, we'd better all sit in the office and make a decision once and for all. And we all got together. Um, and for some reason, this image of the spiky satellite thing with all the aerials and over the splash of colour, reversed out of the splash of colour, just appealed to all five of us at the same moment. So while it was there, we thought we'd better grab it. And uh, we said, that, let's that's it you know because it's just like nothing it's like nothing we've ever we've ever done it's not really like anything anyone else has ever really done it's it's quite an unusual uh, image um, it's a little bit mysterious because you can't quite work out what it is you can see it's got TV aerials fastened to it but it's a sort of mish it's like a mad um, welders sculpture you know it's like a, a junkyard sculpture you know floating in space I suppose it's what satellites kind of are. So we went with that. Well, basically this time we're, we're not putting the the record into retail. It's not going to be in the shops. Uh, we, we Over the course of the last two albums, um, we sort of set, sat back and looked at, at uh, the benefits of, of putting it into retail. And by the time we added up everything that we'd spent on promotion and marketing um, and all the other fees, um, it just wasn't viable anymore for a band in our position. So, I mean, we're not going to sell as many albums doing it this way because people have to come to our website, they have to come to marillion.com to buy the record. Although, you, know, you can buy it online from, from our site or from iTunes or several other places. But generally, if people want the physical CD, they have to come to us to buy it. Um, but it just makes it's it, these days. It's, it's about survival. You know, the whole industry is changing so quickly. Um, CD sales have dropped twenty percent just in the last year. Most people are, uh, download music these days. Only five percent of the people that download music pay for it. So it's a it's a case of trying to work out a way that we can we can survive in these you know very changing times. Um, and the best solution for us was was to try and sell as much as possible direct to our fans. We, you know, we have amazing fans all around the world, and there's a real sense of family and, and trust. And, and really, that's if we're going to be around in another 10 years, that's, that's what we have to try and maintain and build upon, is, is to have as much as possible people coming direct to us. 
you know, some people are nervous about buying on from the internet, but there's different ways you can do that now without uh, risking your <laughs> your bank balance. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's we 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 really thought it was the best solution to the uh, predicament we're in. Yeah, to, to our knowledge, in, in all the time we've been running Racket Records directly from our own website, we, we're not aware of even one person who suffered any kind of fraud by using our website or by paying for uh, our albums online. So it is very, very safe and it's very efficient. You know, you'll have the album in a, in a couple of days if you order it. Um, so um, I suppose it's a logical conclusion really of where we've been going we've, we've, we've been having a more s direct spiritual contact with our fans over time we've been having a dialogue with our fans via the internet um, we've been building up a database of our fans which is now at about 70,000 I think we have 70,000 addresses um, of, our, of, of you know that probably represents at least half if not more than half of our, our total fan base around the world uh, we know who they are and where they are. So the the next logical step is to sell directly to the fans and, and cut out all of these guys in suits that always take all the money. You know, um, what, what many people don't realise is that when you buy a, a CD at, at Virgin or Fnac or HMV or wherever, the artist is receiving maybe less than 8% uh, of the of the value of that album you know the money you pay doesn't go to the artist it goes to guy <coughs> businessman so yeah. I mean less than two euros per copy is, is, would, would come to the band of any album bought in retail and yeah. that's, that's before all our costs are taken off all the costs of manufacturing and, and, and paying the people that we, we, we have running our, our, our operation so uh, yeah it's, it's very hard to make sense of it in those terms. Yeah, I guess it is a double convention. Uh, it's kind of one and a half conventions, really, because the uh, the convention in Holland is uh, of, of the kind of traditional type where we, we hire an entire holiday camp for a, for a weekend, for a weekend, and. Uh, Everybody lives there for three days and parties, and we play three shows consecutively. The, uh, we, we're, we're also then going over to Montreal in Canada, and oh, in Quebec, I should say, in France, uh, in, in Quebec, and um, we're, we're doing. We're going to play the three consecutive nights there, but you don't get you don't get to live there. You know, with this, it's just the concerts. The people will have to find their own accommodation in, in Montreal, but hopefully the shows will be the same or very similar. I'm really looking forward to that because our, 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 our fans in, in Canada, especially French Canada, are amazing, really, really amazing. Uh, there's an atmosphere like really nowhere on earth there. So that should be an amazing experience for everybody. Um, it's probably our largest, the, the convention in Holland is probably the largest we've done so far. We, I think we've sold more tickets than we ever have in the past. We're confident that the entire place will sell out. Um, and we're looking, we're looking forward to it. It's, it's a massive amount of work for us as musicians because we have to have about six or seven hours of music rehearsed and ready to go. Um, and that's not easy, you know, just filling that much into your head uh, at one time. None of us read music, so we have to learn all this stuff and, ha you know, and have it going on in our minds. So that's not easy. But it's well worth it for the atmosphere uh, on the weekend. Oh.